Tonight on News 3 at 6, a deadly shooting in Pittsburgh that authorities are calling a hate crime. How Wisconsin politicians are responding. And the Dodge County Sheriff's Department is describing what led them to shoot a man in Beaver Dam last night. News 3 at 6 starts right now. This is News 3 at 6. Good evening and thanks for watching News 3 at 6. A gunman killed 11 people during a shooting rampage at a Pittsburgh synagogue this morning. Authorities say six people, including four police officers, were injured. Nikki Batiste has the latest. SWAT teams converged on a Pittsburgh synagogue when a gunman opened fire during morning prayer services. Members of the Tree of Life Synagogue conducting a peaceful service in their place of worship were brutally murdered by a gunman targeting them simply because of their faith. The shooter is identified as Pittsburgh resident Robert Bowers. Police say he exchanged fire with responding officers before he was arrested and taken to a local hospital. He's in fair condition with multiple gunshot wounds. Police recovered an assault rifle and three handguns. It's a very horrific crime scene. It's one of the worst that I've seen and I've been on some plane crashes. It's, it's very bad. Authorities would not comment on a possible motive, but local media is reporting Bowers posted anti-Semitic messages on social media. <sighs> President Trump condemned the attack during a speech in Indiana. This wicked act of mass murder is pure evil, hard to believe. Earlier, the president suggested an armed guard may have prevented the massacre. If they had some kind of a protection inside the temple, uh, maybe it could have been a very much different situation. Chuck Diamond is the former rabbi at the synagogue. I have to tell you, I always, in the back of my mind, had something like this and that might happen, you know, because of the way of the world today. The FBI is investigating the shooting as a hate crime. Nikki Batiste, CBS News, Pittsburgh. No children were hurt during that attack. In response to today's shooting, as well as the pipe bombs delivered to Democratic politicians and CNN this week, Madison Mayor Paul Soglin is speaking out against the violence. We need to understand that the people like the pipe bomber or the shooter in Pittsburgh are very disturbed and troubled people. Frankly, their political affiliation or political views are not the issue. They're ill people who need to validate their existence through violence. They can be religious or political zealots or just simple individuals like the assassin in Las Vegas. Governor Walker responded to today's attack on Twitter saying, quote, an attack against any American, regardless of religious, political or other beliefs, is an attack against every American. I condemn the violence in Pittsburgh, end quote. We also spoke to Madison police this afternoon who say they're stepping up patrol at area synagogues. A 35-year-old Beaver Dam man is recovering in the hospital tonight after being shot by police. The officer who shot him is on non-disciplinary leave as officials release more details about what happened. Our Madeline O'Neill is back from Dodge County with the latest. Maddie. Amanda, the man shot has non-life-threatening injuries and the Dodge County Sheriff's Department is investigating what happened yesterday when police responded to his home on Walnut Street. That's where authorities say they encountered the suspect with a firearm. I knew something nasty had been happening. Since 1980, Howard Volker has lived here on Walnut Street, a place he calls a quiet, dead-end road. Well, I'm the gatekeeper here. I live right on the corner. With a vantage point like that, he can see who comes and goes. And it's usually not police. Lots of sirens. Must have been 10 squad cars on this street. That's pretty big for around here. Nothing ever happens like that. At a little after 5.30 Friday night, Beaver Dam police made their way to Walnut Street to investigate a domestic incident after a 911 call. And while in contact with involved persons, officers reacted to a situation involving a firearm. Dodge County Sheriff Dale Schmidt says law enforcement fired shots, hitting a 35-year-old Beaver Dam man on his lower body. Beaver Dam Police Chief John Kreziger says the officer who shot the man is a 17-year veteran of the department. I am very confident that the decisions made by my officers in critical incidents as they are very well trained. 
The officer is on non-disciplinary leave as the Dodge County Sheriff's Office, which was not directly involved in the shooting, investigates what happened. I'm very confident in the abilities of my detective division um, and in the abilities of all of my staff to be able to do a, an impartial investigation into this. After that investigation, the Sheriff's Office will turn over the results to the district attorney. In the meantime, officials say the public isn't in danger. And on Walnut Street, things are once again quiet. And according to Volker, getting back to normal. Very happy nobody died, yeah. Uh, too bad anybody, anything like that has to happen. Now, no officers were hurt from the shots fired, and there's still plenty officials aren't telling us yet, including who called 911, who lives in the house beyond the 35-year-old man and his family, whether or not police have been called to the house before, and if children were involved. Sheriff Schmidt says that's partly because the incident involves sensitive mental health information. Amanda. All right. Thank you so much, Maddie. Dave Caulfield joins us now with your first alert forecast. Thanks. It wasn't the nicest day outside yeah, today. Yeah, a little bit dreary, that's for sure, Amanda, with some light showers moving through during the early afternoon hours. On Doppler track right now, we could see our next rounds of rain still well off to the north and west moving into Minnesota as we speak and even some lightning showing up in some of those showers. So we could be dealing with a few rumbles of thunder at times on Sunday, not out of the question, even across southern Wisconsin by the time we get to tomorrow. A live look in downtown Madison on the Edgewater Skycam. We have the clouds, but no rain right now, currently at 47 degrees. Mostly cloudy skies, calm winds that dew point at 40. Temperatures are in the upper 40s in Madison and in Lone Rock, low 50s as we head over to Boscobel and Prairie du Chien. Wind speed's not too bad, but that won't be the case as we head into tomorrow. Some very gusty winds are possible, <laughs> especially for southwestern Wisconsin. Now your Freak Fest forecast for tonight, that's a bit of a tongue twister. Plenty of clouds, temperatures staying in the 40s, but I do think will remain dry However, we'll time out when those rain showers move through and what to expect as we head into Halloween in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Dave. The Wisconsin football team took another step backward after this afternoon's game against Northwestern. Melissa Kim has more from Ryan Field. Well, Ryan Field here at Northwestern always seems to be a tough place for the Badgers to play. The last time they lost here was in 2014, which was also the last Big Ten West road loss for Wisconsin. Now, Jack Cohn making his debut as starting quarterback today in place of Alex Hornibrook, who is still undergoing concussion protocol. Now, Cohn told us he was so excited to play today that he actually had trouble sleeping last night. But the Wildcats certainly making sure that today's game was a nightmare, not just for Cohn, but the entire Badgers offense as a whole. Now, Northwestern certainly taking advantage of the Badgers' mistakes on both sides of the ball. Okay, so what now? Where do the Badgers go from here? We'll have those answers coming up in sports. At Ryan Field, Melissa Kim, News 3 Sports. Thank you, Melissa. Coming up, there's no doubt buying a car is a big decision. One of the most important boxes your new car has to check is for reliability. Consumer Reports can help you out with that. Which brands to look at? That story coming up next.
Welcome back. State of Wisconsin officials are launching a new addiction hotline as the state sees hundreds of people die of fatal drug overdoses each year. The Wisconsin Addiction Recovery Helpline began operating earlier this month. Officials say it's meant to help people struggling with addiction to opioids and other drugs find counseling, treatment, and other resources. You can reach the hotline by just dialing 211. It is free and available 24 hours a day across the state. Area crafters got a chance to help out some local emergency crews. The Oregon Fire Department and EMS held their 20th annual craft show this afternoon. All proceeds of the event help the fire department buy equipment. Organizers say it's great to have support from the community. It's a great uh, success for the fire association and for the district and bringing everybody together before the holidays. About 1,500 people came out to today's craft fair. When you spend thousands of dollars on a car, you want it to last. Consumer Reports has just released its exclusive new car reliability report, which brands and models are considered the most reliable, and those you might want to steer clear of. Chris Lewenberg reports. Every year, Consumer Reports surveys its members, asking them about any serious problems they experienced with vehicles in the past 12 months. This year's annual auto reliability survey, the largest of its kind, gathered data on more than half a million vehicles. Just because a car's new doesn't mean it's going to be trouble free. According to this survey, in car electronics, like infotainment systems, as well as power equipment and transmissions, continue to give owners headaches. Lexus, Toyota, and Mazda were the top brands, with Mazda making the biggest jump, moving up nine spots from the previous year. Brands at the bottom of the list were Tesla, Cadillac, and Volvo. The Tesla Model S electric stand actually lost its recommended status because of issues reported by CR members with the car's air suspension as well as body hardware issues like the car's door handle. As turbo engines become more common, some car owners in the survey have trouble with their car's turbocharger and engine computer. A few needed to complete engine replacements. The truth is, when automakers introduce such new technology, it can take several model years to get it working correctly. This is Chris Lewenberg. The cars that came out on top as the most reliable were the Lexus GX, Toyota Prius C, and the Mazda MX-5 Miata. While the least reliable were the Ram 3500, Tesla Model X, and the Cadillac ATS. The freaks come out tonight, and if you're not heading to the region's largest Halloween music festival tonight, be prepared to avoid that area. And some rain showers could get spooky close to southern Wisconsin tonight. We'll time out our chances for rain and talk about what to expect for Halloween in our first alert forecast coming up.